The following podcast is brought to you by Iconic Nation Media. Welcome to Season 5 of Level Up Podcast. I'm your host, Kimberly Levy. I'm here to guide you on a journey of personal growth and fulfillment. Join me as we delve into the challenges of both business and personal life, aiming to discover our true selves and connect more deeply with the world around us. On this podcast, we'll explore the topics that inspire and empower us to become the best version of ourselves. From book reviews to interviews with iconic individuals, we'll have insightful conversations that resonate with your journey. And a big thank you to our sponsors, the Boys and Girls Club of America, Greater Neho Valley, and Lovey's Deli for supporting the show and helping us bring these valuable discussions to you. Please share, rate, and review the podcast. And thank you so much for listening. You can also leave your comments at Kimberly Levy on social media. Thank you for your feedback and thank you for listening. Hello and welcome back. I'm so happy to be here with all you fine people today. You guys know I am not joking when I say this is my most favorite thing to do in the world, which is be here with you, podcasting, freestyling, workshopping things, working out how we're feeling about stuff. And for those of you that are new around here, I'm your host, Kimberly Lovey. And on this podcast, we like to talk about anything and everything, but mostly I like to talk about mindset and business. Okay. Sometimes I sprinkle in some family adventures now and again, depending on how things are going. But today I wanted to talk to you mostly about what it is takes to actually make a good business deal. And I am shocked at how many people do not have real experience putting together deals. And you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to be a resource to help you accelerate your business, your brand, your voice, your impact, and level up overall in your life. Um, so, okay, here's the, the deal. I went to USC Business School, right? got my MBA from there and fight on, by the way. And uh, I I actually invested what I believe was about $3,000 at 8% interest to get this advice in a negotiations class that I paid for, that I took. And I remember this was taught to me very cursory and briefly through this course. And it's something that is actually really important. And I've adapted it and brought it forward into my normal everyday negotiations that I do on a daily basis. So, okay. When you think about negotiations, well, first of all, a lot of people are, are afraid. They think that when you're going into a negotiation, that means that you're in a fight. <laughs> they think that a negotiation equals contention. It, this concept of negotiating and that it's adversarial in some way is bizarre. And I don't know why that ever came to be a thing. It's almost like this attitude of like, well, they're going to try and one-up me, so I got to one-up them. And I think that was just the way that things were maybe back in the day growing up. Like I remember my mom taking me to the Rose Bowl and she would have me from a very young age go and negotiate prices for different tchotchkes and things. And so from a very young age, I was very comfortable, very confident asking for a deal, okay, and a fair price. And that was a great exercise, by the way. There's nothing more surprising than, you know, an eight-year-old walking up to a perfect stranger and a vendor and, uh, you know, trying to bargain with them. So um, thank you, mom, for that. So anyway, I want you to remove it from your mind that negotiations are intimidating. They're scary. It's like you're in a fight with the person. It's win versus lose. It's all versus nothing. All of those things are wrong. Okay. And if you still have that mindset, I can guarantee you suck at negotiating. So good thing you're in the right place because I have your back. Okay. Now look, I have negotiated deals worth millions, tens of millions of dollars. Okay. So, and I've been through so many different negotiations at so many different at scale, big scale, small scale, and everything in between. Okay. I negotiate deals on a daily basis. I am always looking for ways to work with other people. And the bottom line is when you are looking to negotiate, I don't look at it as this contentious thing. 
No, I actually look at it as the opposite. And if you really watch the best business people, you will see them put together deals. And the reason for that and the reason why they're ultimately good is because they know ultimately that whoever they're negotiating with has something that they need and they have something of value back, right? So the idea here when you think of a negotiation is that everybody wins, okay, is that we can work together and do more together, That is really the bottom line in a a negotiation. Now, I'm going to tell you my deal breakers, okay? So wait, before I dive into that, I just wanted to round out that point further. The idea of a negotiation is that you expand who you work with and expand your skills. Maybe you can expand products or services that you offer. You can provide your services back. You can partner with people. You can do strategic partnerships with people. And the more comfortable you get at nailing your negotiations, the better. Because I'm telling you, and especially if you're listening as a woman, the better you are at negotiating, whether it's for your own salary at a corporate job, whether it's you're planning a wedding, whether you are an entrepreneur putting together, you know, small deals or you're an entrepreneur putting together massive deals, whatever the case may be, you have to realize that negotiating is part of the game, okay? It's part of you rooting in deeper in what you're good at. It's part of you expanding as a human. It's part of you either gaining or giving or hopefully both. It's not something you should be afraid of. And let me tell you something else, and I learned this from my husband. My husband gets more free stuff that I have ever seen a man get, ever. And you know why? It's for two reasons. Number one, it's because he asks. He asks people to do things for him. He asks if they will do ABC things for him. Most people don't even ask because they're like, oh, this person doesn't do that. They wouldn't do this for me. So number one, ask. Okay, if you don't ask, you don't get. And the second reason why he's brilliant at negotiating is because the way he treats people with respect. And by the way, this can be a handyman. It can be a cleaning person or it could be the CEO of some huge corporation. It doesn't matter who it is. My husband and I both, we treat people exactly the same no matter who they are, period, end of story, with dignity, with respect, with compassion, period, end of story. Now, if you don't understand that, then you probably have some more digging. Um, If you have more money than someone, you have a higher profile than someone, you're more famous, you're more this, you're more that, that's number one, that's awesome for you, but it does not make you a more important or better human than someone else. It means probably that you're better at putting together deals, you're better at marketing, you know, you may have you know, other skills that make you exceptional, which I think, by the way, is rad. I'm not downbeating that. I think it's phenomenal. But it's really important here that I make the point about the human issue because treating people, whether they're your employee or your boss or something else in between, is super important to me personally. It's one of the, the main fabrics of who I am as a human is treating people with respect at every level in every way, period. And look, when you mess up, you apologize. But anyway, not to deviate too much. The bottom line is my husband gets a lot of free shit from people at all different levels because he treats everybody, well, one, because he asks, and two, because he asks nicely. And he asks with compassion and kindness and respect, okay? You would be shocked. Just that alone. Forget numbers and dollars and cents. Forget the rest of anything I teach you on this show. That alone is super important. So I don't want to miss that point because that really is the underpinning of the way that we conduct ourselves. And and it's the way I want you to conduct yourself. Okay. It's just part of being a good human. All right. Now, so here's the thing. When you go into a negotiation, don't think of it like it's this contentious thing. Think of it like you're putting together a deal where everybody wins. Okay. So in USC, they taught me that everyone, a good deal is that when everyone takes a little and everyone gives a little, okay? That's basically what they said. Now, I have adapted that since then because that was 15, 20 years ago. Um, But here's what I do, and I say this to people now almost in every single meeting when I'm first meeting people, and I remind them throughout my conversations with them, and I let them know up front the way I do business. And I let them know up front, look, the way I do business 
is that everybody wins. If there's three parties involved, every single one, two, three parties, every one of us must win. Everyone must benefit from the deal in some way, shape, or form and benefit in a, to an extent that they're satisfied. Now, if that for what, sometimes that just isn't the case. It can't happen. And maybe there's a constraint or the deal just doesn't make sense then that's okay. Then you walk from the deal. So if you're trying to force it to the point where it's impossible almost, that's not a good deal and you don't force the deal. So that's the other part of this is that, and I learned this from my father-in-law, you don't force deals. You do not chase down deals. You do not, you do not beg. You don't act desperate for deals because you know why? What's meant for you is yours and what's not, it will swim past you and it's all good. And Desperate energy gets you nowhere. Forcing a deal is generally just not a good, it's not a good way to be. There's usually a reason why a deal is not coming together. Now, that's not to say, and this is where real experience is so handy, is like you have to know the difference between when a deal just outright does not make sense and then when a deal is one of those things where you just have to figure out a way to overcome, right? And that's where the goodwill when you sit down with somebody up front, and this is very important. Like I'm giving you guys some of my best secrets, by the way. I hope you really are like really paying attention because this is really like golden for me. In what, when you sit down with somebody or with a couple parties and you sit down and you look at them dead in the eye and you say, look, I want everyone to win. I, the way I do business is that I'm not greedy and that everyone has to win. Everybody, it has to make sense for everyone, okay? That doesn't mean everyone gets their first choice, their top dollar, so on and so forth, no. But when you set that expectation up front, what it's basically doing is putting guns down. You're letting people know up front, I'm not here for a contentious fight. I'm here to have some version of a partnership. I'm here to have some version of productivity together, some collaboration, some strategic partnership, something where we all can give and something where we all can take. That is really important to, to one, really just understand that thought and really let that soak in and like think about it. You know, like you don't have to be the one that makes the most money in the deal. You don't have to be the one that gets the tip top dollar and quote unquote win and then the other guy loses. No, the reason why I don't recommend that approach. And by the way, I am a damn good negotiator. So if I really want to hustle to the dollar like that, I know how to do it. And I've done it before. It's just not my preferred method. Okay. Um, And the reason for that is because I'm all about long game. Okay, if you force a deal and you end up finagling someone into getting them to say yes to your top best case scenario and it's like not that good for them, two things are going to happen. One, they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth the whole time. That's not good vibes. And I only want good vibes when I'm doing stuff, when I'm in business or in personal or whatever the case is. I want people there that are happy to be there. And I want people there that feel good about being there. Okay, so number one, it sets a bad tone, leaves them with a bad taste in their mouth, even if they are desperate enough to say yes. Number two, when you set up a deal and not everyone wins, the deal is going to be short-lived. So rather than having a client for, you know, three months, in my mind, I would rather give a little up front, give them a, a good deal up front, knowing that I'm building rapport and I'm building goodwill and I'm being honest and transparent. I'm building trust with them up front so that, you know, in three months when the contract ends, guess what? They want to still work with me because I'm a hoot and a half. I'm a good time girl. I'm a hard worker, right? Like do good work, respect everybody, all the goodness, right? And I really do think that that's the mark of a good leader. You don't need to have toxic environments in negotiations or in the business that you that you run in or in social circles or whatever. You have to be of the mind that there is enough for everyone to win. It's an abundance mindset. And I'm telling you right here, right now, there is enough wins for everyone. There is enough fame and glory for everyone. There is enough dollars in the universe for everyone. It's this scarcity mindset that is kind of really coming from a place of insecurity that drives people to, you know, really just nickel and dime other people in negotiations. That's not how I roll. And let me tell you, 
The boys at the top, that's not how they roll either. They don't nickel and dime. They say, okay, cool. Yes, I'll give you uh, X dollars that you want. And hey, in return, do you think you could maybe give me a little extra on the back end and give me an extra project? You know, I'll pay you your full price, but can you do a little extra for me? You know, there's always a way to build that goodwill. So the point of the matter is here is that when you are going into a negotiation, you need to remove this idea that it's contentious. You need to be aware of the fact that, you know, some people come from scarcity mindsets and that's not you. And you don't, you don't play with people like that. You play with people that are abundant, that know their worth and that are ready to do good stuff together. They're collaborative. And it is your job. You have to take personal responsibility as someone that wants to be successful in life. You have to put on your big girl or big boy hat and put on your I'm a leader and I've decided I'm the leader here and you need to respectfully set the tone up front with whoever you're working with. It's just mind numbing to me how many people don't get these concepts. And here's the other thing, man, I had some, I've had so many meetings and here's what really bothers me. Okay. This is another big caution. Okay. And this is again from real experience, just because somebody is a billionaire okay, or worth hundreds of millions of dollars, that does not give you the right to go and ask them for some exorbitant uh, exorbitant amount of money that is not fair. And here's why that's so important, okay? This literally has come up twice for me in the last two weeks where one, I was negotiating with the billionaire, and two, I was negotiating with somebody that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? And both times, Little birdies were like, oh, you know, tell them this price. It doesn't make a difference. You know, we're talking to the tune of hundreds of thousands, okay? Just so you guys have a sense, okay? Oh, it's nothing for them. That's nothing for them. It's like, yeah, I know, but that's not the point. The point is, is that I actually respect that this person has that money because let me tell you, smart people and people that thrive in business didn't get there by making bad business deals. They're shrewd and they're smart, Okay, so number one, you don't want them to sniff you out as someone taking advantage that is not going to deliver. Okay, that's number one. That is bad. It's bad for your own reputation. And a lot of these people that are high profile are very well connected. So your reputation, if, if nothing else matters to you in that situation, your reputation matters. Their ability to refer you is 100 times over in many cases than you just getting an extra X amount of dollars, 100K, 10K, whatever the number is, okay? So don't be greedy. Just because someone has the dollars behind them, it doesn't mean that you should be hustling them and asking them above and beyond what you would ask other people, okay? And when you do that, you let them know, I'm giving you my best price. And in doing that, you are building trust, And guess what? You will have a customer for life in them. You will have referrals for life in them. And you will, I guarantee, if you, you know, reduce your price by 100K, 10K, 50K, whatever it is that you could have overcharged them, I will promise you that they will forever be someone that will make sure you make it back in dividends. They will make note that you're someone that's honest, you're transparent, you're genuine, you're trustworthy. And guess what? Those people have all kinds of people around them grabbing at money all day long. It's sickening to watch. It actually makes me feel bad for them. I literally walked out of a meeting with the billionaire the other day and I literally called my friend that referred me and I said, I feel bad for this person. And my friend starts laughing. What are you talking about? This person, like, you do realize they have like $985 million in exits. I'm like, okay, cool, but I feel bad. Like they don't have anyone in their corner that's truly looking out for them. That bothers me. Like I don't like that. It's not the way I roll. I don't like it. You've got to be a good person when you are when you are doing business. And I talked to you last week. If you missed last week's episode, I talked to you about don't run for the money. You're missing the point. Okay, again, same thing. And I talk about how I walked away from a near seven-figure job because it was not the right fit, you know, And so when I tell you this stuff, you guys, it comes from real experience and there's real dollars behind it and it takes real balls, real confidence and just real character to, to do business the way that I do it. And 
I'm just trying to get the word out there because one, I want you to feel comfortable and confident in your negotiations. Know what you know, know what you don't know, and reach out to people that can help round out your business deals in the best way possible. Find ways for yourself to win, find ways for them to win, and make sure it's very clear that everyone rises together. And that is truly, as cheesy as it sounds, that is how I have been so successful in my career. From a very young age as a management consultant, I was selling 20, 30 plus million dollar deals, okay, to Fortune 10 companies, okay? I was the most junior person on the ground. The reason why I got deals done was because they trusted me. They trusted me at a very, very, very young age. I always followed through on my word. I always got the best, did the best work. I always respected everybody. And I got so many deals done because they liked me. They trusted me. They knew that I was going to get stuff done, you know, the right way and that I was fair. And I'll leave you with this. My mom told me one of the things that she would do as a leader was she was firm, fair, and friendly. I'll talk more about my mom at a later date, not today, but there's more to that story. And I'm telling you now, her employees adored her. She led 50, 60 plus, I think up to a hundred, probably hundreds of employees in her entire career. They loved her even 10 years later. Okay. Firm, fair, and friendly. So it's okay to ask for things. Just make sure that you're respectful, you're direct, you're upfront, you're transparent, you're honest. And find ways to get deals done so you guys can work together. I assure you, you will make money with this with this approach. I promise you, not only are you going to make money though, you're going to make friends. And let me tell you, there is nothing more fun than getting to do projects and working and making great money and having your friends by your side doing it. It's a blast. I guarantee there is nothing better than that. So... I hope that I inspired you to go out into the world, make deals, you know, negotiate a little bit. Yes, give, take, set the tone, practice all these skills. But I, I assure you this, this is gold. This is my winning strategy. I'm giving it to you for free, okay, for absolute free because I love you, because I want the world to be a better place. Okay, because I think there's too many shitty business people out there. There's too many people that don't have real experience. There's too many people that are insecure. And I want good business with good people. That's my vibe. All right. Mic drop. Have a wonderful day. Please, if you like this, will you please do me a solid? Give me a rating. Five stars. It takes a second. Follow the show. Send it around to your colleagues, your boss, your employees, your friends, your family, whoever needs to hear this. Don't be greedy. Send it. Share the information. Tag me on Instagram if you liked it. Um, Follow me at Kimberly Lovey. And as always, if you want to talk to me about podcasting, send me a DM. We're launching shows like crazy and I couldn't be happier. All right. Love you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and I will see you next week. All right. That is it for today. Thank you very much for listening and be sure to follow us at Iconic Nation Media and send us a direct message and comment on some of our posts so that we can hear your feedback and incorporate them into our show. We appreciate you listening and we look forward to catching you next week.